In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a real estate lead gen agent using the new Assistance API of OpenAI. And if you have never heard what Assistance API actually is, it is basically the equivalent to a custom GPT, but that it is accessed through an API, which gives you the possibility to basically implement the thing wherever you'd like, on your website, inside of Slack, inside of Instagram, on different platforms, it is all up to you. And that is why this Assistance API is in my opinion, even more powerful than the custom GPTs that have been released. And if you are not even familiar of custom GPTs, I suggest you to check out my other video on how to create custom GPTs and what they are because I provide some pretty neat examples. And in this video, it's gonna be a bit more advanced, so I will not try to go too deep into the code to confuse you, but rather I will show you how to set it up and I will also provide you all the templates and everything you need to create this bot for free. And you can get access to all of those specific templates and tools directly in our resource tab under hub.indigradicus.com. Simply sign up for it, it's for free. You can download everything and you can follow me along on the screen. Before showing you how to set it up, I'm going to give you a brief demonstration of what this chatbot does because it has access to three major actions. And of course, in the first place, it's here to assist us with our inquiries for whatever questions we have about our real estate agency. And it can also search through your property listings. It can also schedule viewings and it can also create leads, which is those three main aspects that we focus on with this specific chatbot. And like I say, let's just dive right into it. I'm going to show you the example and after I will show you how to set it up. And at the end, I will give you some tips on how you can actually customize it so that you can extend it based on your needs. Before, if you would like me to extend it, I am very, very happy as well if you provide me some more details or features that you'd like to see inside of the chatbot down below in the description. And I'm very happy to extend my video and <laughs> show you further features in the future. So that is another possibility that I'd like to offer you. All right, as you can see on my screen, I have a quick WordPress website that I just bootstrapped that has some very simple information. The real estate agency I made up is called Bright Horizons Realty. As you can see at the bottom right of the website, we also have a chat widget here. And if I click on it, it loads a chat that basically says, Hi, I'm John, Bright Horizons Realty Assistant. How can I help you today? And me as a client, I would like to know what specific apartments they have available in the US because I added up a US database. So we are just going to search for something like, Hi, I'm Janis. I'm looking for an apartment in Denver for around 500k. Okay, so what I expect the chatbot to do now is basically use the query action to actually find any kind of properties that we have available in Denver for around 500k. And as you can see, it finds one here uh, that says price, bedrooms, bathrooms, blah, blah. So it found a couple of them actually. And while this is listed as a single family home, the specifications might be similar to what you're looking for in an apartment given the generous space and amenities. Amazing. And it also asks us, would you like to schedule a viewing for this property or are you interested in seeing similar options so that it might be apartment specifically. I say a viewing would be great. So something like that, which basically now tells the AI that it should use the schedule viewing action. And as you can see, it says, fantastic. Could you please provide me the preferred date and time for viewing? Also, I need your email address to confirm the appointment. All right, so I'm gonna say, sure, January 24th, 2024 at around 12 p.m. My email is Janice more at gmail.test, something like this. So what I expect you to do now is talk with the schedule viewing API or action and create a viewing for us. And you can see it actually did it properly. Your viewing has been scheduled for the property at 202 blah, blah, blah. with your email. You should have gotten a confirmation shortly. And if I have any other questions, so it basically just continues the chat. And this is just amazing because I can use just natural language to actually create viewings and everything directly inside the chatbot. And that in a very easy and more optimized manner that I would have been able to do it before the assistance API. So all of that comes right off the box. And now I'm going to show you how you can do that and how you can set it up for yourself in the easiest way possible. And before showing you the exact tools itself, I'm going to tell you what tools you need in the first place. And like I said, everything is down below in the resource hub as a template. So you can simply sign up, download it for free and follow me along. The first tool you're going to need is called VoiceFlow. VoiceFlow is what we are using as the visual chatbot that we implement on the website. The second tool we are going to use is called Replit, which basically allows us to provide a code base on a server that we can customize with our custom code and do specific actions with it. I promise you, you will not need to write any code. Everything will be available as a template. You just need to adjust some values, but I'm going to show you that in a moment. The third tool you need is called make.com, which we are going to use to schedule our viewings inside of our Google Calendar. Then we are also going to use Airtable to capture the leads, which is what we haven't done here. 
here, but you can basically capture the leads in case someone is interested in a property and the AI tries to do that by itself and try to find whenever there's a good possibility of capturing a lead to actually capture the lead. And lastly, of course, you need to have an open AI account for the API because that is also what you need to actually communicate with the assistance API. All right, the first thing you need to do is you need to head over to a resource hub and fork the Repli template, which looks something like this. There was an amazing approach from Liam Otley. If you don't know about him, it's amazing. I'll link his channel as well down in the description. So Liam basically provided an amazing example for a solar company. And I basically used the template, I customized it and I structured it more so it's easier for me to use and of course for you to use. And I'm gonna explain you the changes and the way it works because I believe the way I set it up is just more optimized or more easy to read. And once you have copied the template to your very own server, or to your very own Replit account. You should see something like this here on the, on the left, all the files, which is main, functions, core, config assistant. The assistant JSON is dynamically created, so you will not have it in the beginning because it just contains the actual ID of the assistant that I created. And the company details, which is a just a, a regular text document that contains more information about our real estate company that I, fa that I created. And this one uses a markdown, but that doesn't matter for now. And this is located inside the resource folder. Okay, once you have all of those files here, what you need to do is we don't launch anything yet because we first need to set up some other tools. So you also go over to your VoiceFlow account and you download the template from our resource app. You import it to VoiceFlow. You can do that before creating an assistant. And once you did that, it should look something like this, where you have certain actions or certain Images in here that can communicate with an API and then we are good to go with this one so the first thing we're going to set up is we basically connect Replit with this specific voice flow template so to do that as you can see in the create thread you are basically requested to add a URL here. And this URL needs to be your very own one that you can find within your Replit code. So if you go to web view, you will find a button here called new tab. You just right click it, copy link address. You head back over to your chatbot. You go into here and you replace everything before the slash start with a URL or with, with a slash, sorry, with a slash. So that it looks like this slash start. For me, that didn't change anything because it was already the same URL. And you do the exact same thing here with the generate response. Just that you see that the difference is the slash chat at the end. And once you have set up your custom URL here from that Replit template, you're ready to go. Also, I'd like to note in case you don't see the web view here, you can click on the plus and you can select the web view from the drop down here and can add it to the viewing here so you can find that new tab button in the first place. All right, once you did that, you are good to go here. So you can simply save it or publish it. And I'm going to show you how that works as well. So we're just going to create a new version, we publish it, and then it will be prompted to add it as a widget or you can add it as a widget, as you can see here, embed widget. We just click on it and you just copy that whole code and you place it into the body of your website. So wherever that website is hosted, you simply add it before the closing body tag or wherever you can inside of the script tags, whatever kind of platform you use to create the bots. And then you will already see the chatbot right in here. You will see it in a way that looks like this, where you already see the messages, but you can still not properly use it because it is not connected to other parts of our template. And to do that, we basically continue with the next step, which is OpenAI. So to connect it with OpenAI, you of course need to set up an OpenAI account. You simply connect it with an OpenAI account. I just click here and you will find it. You just log into OpenAI and you go over here to API keys and you fetch the API key you need. And once you did that, once you have copied the API key, what you do is you go here, you go to the secrets tab. Again, if you don't find it, you click on the little plus, you search for secrets and you will find the secrets tab right here. And there you will find two specific inputs the OpenAI API key and the Airtable API key. The first one you need to set up is of course the OpenAI API key. You can paste it in here, the one you copied from OpenAI and you're ready to go with the OpenAI setup itself. So that is also done. The next step we actually need to do is set up the Airtable API key. And what you do for that is you first create a new Airtable under Airtable.com. If you don't have an account, just create one, it's for free. You can simply use it with whatever kind of database you would like. This is to capture the leads and you can set up a table that looks something like this which has the columns, name, phone, email, and property preferences. That's all we need in that example. And it should also be sufficient. Then to get actually access to your API key, you simply click on here, then you go to developer hub, and in the developer hub, you can create your new token right here, which gives you access to the API token, which you can then add into the Airtable API key. And once you did that, you still need to add the URL that is like your specific URL for the endpoint. And I'm going to show you where, to where you have to place that. First, I'm going to show you where you find it. You go over here and you go to Web API Documentation. You click on your first workspace that you will find on here, Real Estate GPT Agent. And then you click on authentication and you will find a URL right here with slash leads at the end. You just copy that whole URL. You head over to our Replit template. You go into functions.py. You scroll down a little bit 
to the create lead file down here and you will find the URL here. And this is the one you can replace with your specific lead URL. For me, it doesn't replace anything now because it's the exact same URL, but for you, you would have a different one here. All right, once we did that, you can simply save the file by pressing command S or I think control S on Windows, save the file, and you're good to go with the Airtable setup as well. Then the last thing we need to do is set up our make.com template, which you also have access to through our resource hub. So simply download it in the resource hub and import it into a scenario of your choice. You can do that by clicking on inside of a scenario on the three dots and into on import blueprint. And once you have done that, it should look something like this, which has literally just a trigger and a single action to create an event inside of our Google calendar. All you need to do is you need to set up your Google calendar up here and then the rest is already configured. So you basically don't need to do anything in the first place. Then inside the webhooks, you click on that, on the webhook trigger, you copy the address to clipboard, you head back over to our functions.py file, and in line 43, as seen here, you simply replace that make.com webhook URL and header with yours. Again, for me, it doesn't change anything because it's the same one, and you again save that file. And you can see, if you save it, this little icon here starts loading, and you will see that it saved it properly at the bottom right. Okay, now we should basically be ready to already test that whole thing. And if you set up everything, all you need to do is you need to click here on the run button and it should work. And if you see no error, it should look something like this as, as seen here. Because if you would have an error, you would not see the specific information and you would see more some kind of error message that you can see to debug what's going wrong. But that's basically it. If this one is running, you can already head over to your website, refresh, click on it and actually try it out for yourself and see if it works. You can ask it some questions about the actions that are available and that's it. So this basically gives you already access to the whole possibility of using the chatbot directly with a custom assistant API on whatever platform you want, in that case on the website. And now as an addition, I would like to give you some more information on all of the code inside of our Replit template because there's a lot happening and I would like to give you a little bit more clearance so that you know how you can customize it yourself. And to do that, you basically head first to the main.py file, which is the main file that contains only configuration part. So you see here slash start, this is basically two endpoints that we are using within our voice flow template to communicate with it. So when we head to the designer and you click into here, you can see that we have slash start here, which is the endpoint that we talk to over here and it does these specific things. So this is usually something you don't need to touch. This is already pretty standard and it's properly formatted. The assistant, the pi file, you basically also don't need to touch. All of that is predefined and usually nothing you need to worry about. Core functions is the exact same thing. It is just predefined code that enables you to actually do the things with the open AI API. But where you would like to look into is mostly the config.py file where you will find all of the tools or the so called actions that we have available as well as the assistant instructions. And as you can see here, the assistant instructions is a big variable within three curly brackets that also closes with three curly brackets. And all of that information in the middle is basically just instructions that we use to give our assistant meaning. As you can see here, it has constraints, it has uh, functions that it has access to, the approach it should use, that it should always like the, the goal at the end so that it should always be helpful, basically always help the customers to, to get to an end goal. And of course, to capture information from the customer. So you can customize that the way you would like it. It's pretty generic, so I didn't add any real estate information in here, but you could also do stuff like, I'm a real estate agent of Bright Horizons, for example, realty, and then just add some more information about your company. That is something I don't do here because I used a different approach for that. I'm gonna show you that in a moment because what I did is basically, I have a resources folder that dynamically collects everything in it and lists it or trains that assistant API on the data that is available within it. So I'm gonna show you right here. We have a markdown setup that I literally created with ChatGPT. You can do the same thing. You just drop in your real estate name and you tell it you would like to have a bio or a CV of your company in the markdown format. And then it will look something like this. So it just contains everything we offer, our commitment, where to contact us, stuff like that. So that's all the information we have available within that resources. If you would like to add more resources, what you can do is like all of those files are automatically added to that assistant while you create it. So keep in mind that the assistant always gets created once with this assistant adjacent. So if you don't see it, it will create a new assistant with the information you have in here. In case you adjust something inside of your resources or inside of your config, I suggest to delete the assistant.json file and run that whole thing again so that it creates it again. So it basically creates a new assistant with your new information. Otherwise you would still run on the old one. And if you want to add more files, you can do the same thing. Let's just say I copy the exact same stuff again and I want to have a new file right in here. I call it uh, company info2.com 
txt file and I can add the same information here or whatever information I want to add as well. And it will also start indexing that. So you don't need to add any more custom code. All of that is automatically indexed for you. So you only need to provide the information inside of the resources folder. And then back to the config, we have something called actions or the tools, which you see here. And this definition basically is what the custom action has access to, which is a function. And that function is called schedule viewing. It has a description, scheduler property viewing based on your user preference. And it has access to parameters, which is what we actually need at the end to do certain information with it. And I'm going to show you that right now. So for the schedule viewing function, which basically like the name says, schedules the viewing for our real estate chatbot, we have parameters available called property ID, desire date, desire time and email. And you will see when you head into our make.com template you open this tab you will see property id viewing date viewing time and the email we actually don't use here i see but that is something we could probably add from yeah that you can probably add here in the event name i, I think i just saw i haven't done that yet but you can basically add the email id right here once you've added the email like this it will also have the email inside of the meeting so you can you always have access to of course that was a very quick bootstrap you can definitely optimize that by using either other tools or setting up your google calendar differently or use even the, the text one so this is in detail you have the quickly one where you can describe your meeting in natural language and it creates it for you as well so that's another nice alternative but anyways those are all the properties that are defined here and if you want to add a new one let's say you want to add one for let's say contacting us you can basically just copy that whole variable you can say contact tool and then you would change stuff like contact us and you would add the variables that you need and then you can copy that variable name and you simply head in the assistance.py file and if you scroll down you can add the custom new tool or action that you added right here so you say config dot and then the tool that you actually want to add it in and it looks something like this and that's all you need so and the comma here is also missing perfect so now you basically added a new action that is the way how you can extend them and again don't forget to stop uh, delete the assistant json and restart again in case you want this new action to be available and we did the exact same thing for those other actions as well as you can see here create lead and property search tool the property search tool is the last one i would like to look into with you because we can also see all of the the callbacks and that that are important and callbacks basically is when the assistant API actually wants to call one of those functions that we defined because right now we just defined them, but we also have, of course, a callback which OpenAI can use to execute that function. So when copying the property search function, for example, you can head into functions.py file and search for it or just scroll for it. As you can see here, it's in line 120, the property search. And this is basically the callback for the property search function. And right now what we do is we have a very, very basic example that just takes a sample property.json file, which is here, which just contains a JSON of 17 properties that we listed in the USA. But this is something that you can customize or even connect to your very own API endpoints on whatever database you have access to. And then you can basically filter through it here. So what I did is for matching properties, as you can see here, we basically just loop through it. And and we check if the price kind of matches, if the location kind of matches, and if it matches, we add it to the matching properties and we return them. So in case you have an own API endpoint, you would do something like, you would probably have an API call here that fetches the information based on the parameters that you have defined inside of the function right here. So we have budget, location, property, search, a property type. But if you want to have something like search, let's say search, you can basically pass this value as well a, along inside of your functions.py file right here so that you can basically create a query that can query information directly on a database or wherever you have hosted it what i really like by the way is angolia if you have seen it it's an amazing tool for filtering some information using native language or natural language and then you can also filter through the matching properties and return them again inside of the inside of this tool function that then again is sent back to the assistance api and that one can use it to create a natural res response and I think that's it for now. It's uh, already quite a lot of information that I, I gave you right here. So just to wrap it up again, for you, the only things you need to really adjust is the functions.py file, the config.py file, and the resources in case you want to. And you, of course, have to add all of the keys as, I, as I've showed you before. And that's basically it. If you manage to make it work, you should see the chatbot right here as a, as a widget at the bottom. You can click on it, you can com communicate with it, and you can extend it always inside of your repl.com file. If you want to take the thing actually live and you don't just want to run it in your browser, because once you close that, the server basically shuts down, you can click on the deploy button and you can set up a deployment 
on an actual server that runs even without you having it open in the browser. So this is great for testing. This is great for actually setting up your deployment and using it on a live website. So I definitely suggest you to check that out in case you plan on making a real estate bot like that and taking it live. And yeah, that's it for now. I think it's already a lot of information. Uh, definitely go through it again and uh, definitely download the templates. They are a big help. So you don't have to write any custom code. And if there are any other questions or features you would like to see within this specific chatbot, I'm very, very happy to help you out and create another video about it, extend it. And so we can basically build an amazing real estate chatbot together. And I hope you liked the video so far. Feel free to follow me again for more. Feel free to subscribe. We'll definitely appreciate that and see you next time.